Hi everyone. Laura and Brandy asked me to, uh, you know, give them a feel of what's going on in Florence and I'm absolutely delighted to send through uh, a few videos of um, some special things in Florence to remind you uh, of what is waiting for you when you can next come back to Italy. And uh, at the moment I'm in the Town Hall Square and today is uh, Florence's public holiday, 24th of June everyone, because today we celebrate our patron Saint John the Baptist, Saint John the Baptist, San Giovanni Battista. And so it is just glorious to be walking around with all the other uh, Florentines in our city and uh, seeing things with new eyes, considering it's a special day. So at the moment we're in the Town Hall Square and I've got the magnificent Town Hall behind me that was built in 1299. If you're gonna build something like this in 1299, then definitely that is a display of exactly what Florence was like in this period. Indeed, in exactly these years, the Republic of Florence and the Republic of um, Venice are the two most populated and the wealthiest places in the whole of Europe. And so, uh, as I said, it, it's a, it was a republic. So it's based on mercantile activity. So the families that were part of the government, they um, were voted into the government. Um, they were part, the heads of some of the most important business families in Europe at the time. And Florence made its money on uh, wool manufacturing and on banking. And the coats of arms that you actually see above on the top of the town hall, frescoed there in the 1300s, are all uh, symbols to do with the Republic itself. Then this will, 300 years later, this will be turned into the first Ducal Palace, when one of those big merchant families, the Medici family, one of the most important banking families in Europe, end up overthrowing the Republic and becoming the official Dukes and then Grand Dukes of Florence and then Tuscany. And they'll all actually move in here in 1540 and make this their first Ducal Palace. What's interesting at saying that is that you can actually see the additions, architectural additions on the building that kind of helps you walk through time. So when those crenellations finish at the top of the building and you've got that first part with round headed windows that was unfinished on the exterior, that was done in the 1490s when when a friar, Giovanni Rosa Savonarola, started to, a Dominican friar, started to rule Florence for a few years uh, in the 1490s in a strict theological government, he wanted to enlarge the participation actually of the government because before then it was actually an oligarchy, a few select people ultimately being renewed in the government. He wanted to enlarge it on the scale that the patricians in Venice had. And uh, so he enlarged it to 1,500 people in the lower government and they needed an extra space. So that's where that first edition is. Then. 60 years later, more or less, when the Medici family move in here and make this their palace, they make that last extension that you see. And then you can see this massive block, therefore becomes the first Ducal Palace. But interestingly, the building on the left-hand side dates to the 1300s when, as I was mentioning, it was a republic, it was booming with mercantile activity, great population, lots of money, and they had this merchant court built in the middle of the 1300s. So it was where indeed, if you had a problem, with uh, trade in any which way. Uh, this dealt with commercial matters. And then it was, uh, fast forward now 700 years to not that long ago, so in the 1900s, uh, it was empty for many decades. And in fact, um, the Gucci Corporation decided to uh, buy it, or at least renovate it and long-term rent it, um, create a museum, so it's now on the, on the top floors, it's the Gucci Museum, uh, precisely to celebrate 90 years of being Gucci. In fact, Guccio Gucci in 1921, who was Florentine, opened up his first store, just a stone's throw from him here, uh, selling luggage. And to celebrate, therefore, 90 years of being in existence, uh, they um, decided to renovate it, create a museum, and have a restaurant on the ground floor. Interestingly, the restaurant, which is rather fun to go to, um, the menu is fantastic and the service is absolutely lovely and everyone looks great because they're dressed head to toe in Gucci, uh, but it's a lovely atmosphere. However, what's interesting is that all the plates they use are uh, from the uh, Ginori manufacturer porcelain that dates to the middle of the 1700s. It's one of the very first companies that was born here in Florence. Um, and uh, to actually make porcelain. And it went bankrupt a few years ago. And the Gucci Corporation bought it, being another Florentine. Even though Gucci has nothing, any, nothing to do anymore with the Gucci family, but being traditionally from here, they actually bought it out and uh, uh, invested in it. And it is absolutely beautiful. There's a beautiful shop of Genori porcelain here. And um, they serve, uh, they use it as their uh, serving dishes in the restaurant. So it's kind of a very much a Tuscan experience. In a 14th century, 
courthouse in um, with the coats of arms of the guild corporations on the inside as well as on the outside. The outside of the copies, the inside of the originals, as well as then kind of that 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 contemporary flair. And then I guess that's why you know Italy is so seductive, precisely because it seems to have. If you're curious about anything, really, you know, architecture, art, history, food, wine, fashion, um, you really can't separate any of that, you know, in Italy, which makes it so addictive. Mm. So uh, anyway, a little bit of Italy coming your way.